In this video, I want to share with you how I took this mint box and made it into this bottle opener. Stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And in this video, I want to share with you the process that I took to create this circle bottle opener. In this video, I want to share with you the process that I took to be able to get the flag within a circle, how to carve the flag, and also how to carve out the circle from your material. And not only that, I'm also going to share with you how I carved out the slot for the actual bottle opener on the back. I'm going to take you step by step on how to create this. So if you're going to follow along, make sure to pause, maybe take some notes, because I know that you're going to enjoy it and you're going to get some value out of this. If you are getting value from this video, just leave me a comment below of what you're interested in learning next. Also, if you are getting value out of this, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so let's jump into Carbide Create. The mint box has an approximate diameter of three inches. What we need to do is create a circle vector. So we need to come over here and create a circle vector and just randomly create one. And this is asking for our radius. So our radius is half the diameter. So the radius is going to be half an inch. And you can see down here that the selected size is now three inches or three by three, meaning that this circle has a diameter of three inches. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to uh, align this circle within this flag. And since it is going to be a thin blue line flag, I need to ensure that there is this stripe here, which is going to be blue, and then part of this other stripe here. So let's go ahead and work on that sizing. Okay guys, so after messing around with it, I've come up with this particular design. So now what we wanna do is we want to remove all this other stuff here and simply have a flag within the circle. The correct way to do this is to create an offset. We're going to create an inner offset of 0.1 or you can choose an offset that you like. This is from a different uh, project. For the purposes of this example, we'll just keep it at 0.1. We're going to go ahead and create an offset of 0.1 inside direction and click apply. Before we continue, let's think about this. We want our completed circle, our cut out circle to be three inches. So what we need to do is we need to select the inner circle. We need to then select the flag. And then we're going to select Boolean intersection. So now what we can see here is that the stripes are now perfect really, right? They're not going up to the outer circle vector. So now the outer circle vector can be cut all on its own with some nice independent stripes throughout the circle. Also, these stars do not go all the way up to the circle vector. So again, they're, I guess, the, I'm not too sure if the correct word is independent, but they're not connected. They're not touching this outer circle vector. And what we do need to do is just clean up this file a little bit. We don't wanna keep these in there. They're not gonna carve nicely. And there you go, guys. Before I show you the carve of the bottle openers, I do want to jump in here real quick and let you know that I did have to move the flag to be able to get more stars or cleaner stars in the actual circle. I did want to let you guys know because the stars may be looking different from this point on. All right, guys, so this is the way that I organized the bottle openers on my grid. I have a Cato flag that got messed up. It just carved too deep, so it's already stained black for me. It's ready to go. So I'm just going to organize the bottle openers here on this particular flag and cut around this sign or this carve here that got pocketed incorrectly. So I organize it this way. Go ahead and organize the bottle openers on your material, however you want to do that. Let me just show you real quick how I set everything up. I like to do my tool paths in groups. So if you've seen any of my other videos, that's kind of what I recommend. So if one of the groups is going to be the stars. The other group, oh, don't want to move them. The other group is going to be all the stripes. And then the last group is going to be the circle, the outer circle. Um, that will be contoured to actually, you know, carve out the bottle opener. Let me go ahead and show you the tool paths real quick. So the first one that I will do is going to be the stripes. The stripes will be first. The stars will be next. And then the last one will be the contour tool path. The stripes are going to be carved using an advanced V carve tool path. So I'm going to pocket the stripes with the 102 end mill at 80, 90 plunge and feed rate. And the 60 degree V bit will come back in and make everything nice and clean and sharp. Again, same plunge and feed rate, 80, 90. The max depth is going to be 0 0.03. And I'll just name that stripes. The stars are going to be carved with a 60 degree V bit. We're gonna keep the plunge and feed rate 80, 90 again. We're gonna set our max depth to stock bottom. And we're gonna let the program calculate how deep it needs to carve and I just named that stars. And the last toolpath is going to be the contour toolpath. But prior to actually setting up our contour toolpath, you're gonna to wanna to select the outer vector, and then you're gonna click on this 
tabs option and you're gonna go ahead and set up your tabs place them however you want to place them and then you can go ahead and select your circle vector come in and set up your contour toolpath and I'm going to select stock bottom because I want to cut through the entire material you're going to want to select outside right for your offset direction that way it carves out on the outside basically and you're going to get the entire three inch diameter circle rather than cutting inside and then you're going to lose some of the material or some of your design so let me see if I can show you that if you were to select inside left you would be cutting this section out or cutting short your design so you don't want that so that's why you're going to want outside right all right so let's take a look at a simulation there we go guys that's what it's going to look like let's go ahead and send it off to the machine all right guys so let's go ahead and take this off the waste board here let's take a look at it I only have a quarter inch up cut bit and that's what I use for this cutout, these cutouts here. And I'm actually very happy with the results because usually you're gonna see some more fraying typically. And so I didn't get any of that. So I'm very happy with it. Let's go ahead and pop these out. After removing the bottle openers from the material, I took my Milwaukee wire cutters and removed some of the sharp leftovers. I kid you not guys, this is one of the best tools that I have in my garage. These Milwaukee wire cutters come in handy in all projects. So if you don't have them, I highly recommend you pick them up. I then sanded everything down with my orbital sander and then torched the bottle openers for a more rustic look. Rather than painting on the blue line, which would have taken a long time, I decided to use a blue sharpie for the blue line and that worked out okay. In this next part of the video, I'll share with you the process on how to make a slot for your bottle openers. Alright guys, so jumping into Carbide Create. How did I create this? This is very simple. This is going to be the circle here that will be the slot or the pocket for the actual bottle opener. And this space is actually going to be the space that will allow for the bottle cap to enter and then be able to be uh, opened. So how did I create this? Let me go ahead and show you real quick. First of all, you're going to need the measurement of your um, bottle opener, right? In my case, it is 40 millimeters or 1.56 inches. And so to find the radius, it'd just be half of the diameter. So half of 1.56 is 0.78. So when we create our circle, let's go ahead and update the radius to the appropriate radius. So go ahead and figure that out. The radius again is just half of the diameter. So once we have the circle to the correct measurements, what we're gonna need to do is now select a circle and we're gonna go ahead and create an inside offset. Inside offset. What worked for me is an inside offset of 0.1. Once we have the inside diameter, the next step is to create a square vector. In this case, it's gonna be square or rectangular. Typically what you see with these bottle openers is that this vector here, this inner vector, has a longer top and a shorter bottom. So to be able to achieve that, it comes down to how we organize our uh, rectangles here. So what we wanna do is we wanna organize or you wanna align this to what we think looks best. So that looks good there. All right, so now that we have this place correctly, we just wanna copy it, so select it. Control C, Control V, and now we have a copied uh, vector. And here we wanna be able to uh, make it a little bit shorter. So what we can do is just bring it down a little bit here, and that looks good. You can go ahead and play with it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to select the circle. We're gonna hold Shift and select the top rectangle, and we're going to select the Boolean subtraction. We're gonna click OK. Now that gets rid of that rectangle, but it gives us that flat top here. Next we're going to go ahead and keep the circle selected. We're going to select again by holding shift the rectangle and then we're going to click on boolean subtraction again. And now we have that slot that we wanted. All right so let's talk about toolpaths. I'm going to get rid of this one because I just wanted to show you how I got to this point. So now let me show you the toolpaths that worked out for me. We're going to start with the outer pocket first. This is going to allow for the bottle opener again to sit into that pocket. So let's talk about that one first. I'm using a quarter inch up cut end mill down cut would probably be better, but the up cut actually worked just fine. And let's take a look at the uh, speeds and stuff. So for this initial pocket, we're going to have a max depth of 0 0.1. 0 0.1 seemed to work for this particular bottle opener. And the speeds, plunge and feed rates are 80, 90. All right, so let's take a look at the simulation. 
There's really not much to see here. It's just a pocketed circle. So now let's talk about this inner vector. Because I've already created a circle with a pocket depth of 0.1, to allow the CNC to just keep going without any bit changes or without having to reset my Z, I'm gonna have the other vector have a starting depth of 0.1. That way I don't have to change my Z axis. It's just gonna start at the max depth of the previous pocket. And the max depth that we're going to now is 0.35. That seemed to work out for me. And again, the plunge and feed rates are 80, 90. And let's take a look at that simulation now. And there you have it guys. That is the slot for the bottle opener and the uh, additional pocket for, to allow for the bottle cap to enter and then be popped off. So let's go ahead and send it off to the machine and let's take a look at how it comes out. I made this really rough jig to be able to hold the bottle openers in the same spot. This allowed me to simply start the job over after each completion without having to reset the X, Y, or Z axis. All right guys, so that's how you make one of these. Let's go ahead and see if it actually works. This is a brand new Coke bottle. Let's see if we can make it work. Well, apparently I can't use the bottle opener, but it did work. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.